to apply the Unreal Bloom effect as we've seen in a previous video we have to add the render pass, the bloom pass and finally the output pass to the effect composer and that's it. The thing is that method applies the effect to the entire scene however in many cases you may want to apply it only to certain objects or maybe only to certain parts of a loaded model and that's exactly what we are going to do in this tutorial. The implementation of the idea is going to be in a form of faces so in the first phase we are going to darken every object in the scene by replacing their original materials by a dark color material and we are going to exclude the objects that we want to apply the bloom to. But how are we going to select these exact objects you might be asking? Well we are simply going to make these objects members of a specific layer. By the way if you don't know what are layers in 3JS make sure to check out this video. In the next phase we'll apply the Unreal Bloom Pass and here only the non-darknet objects will be affected by the bloom of course. In the final phase we are going to set back the original materials to the darknet objects and that's it theoretically. Now let's get our hands dirty with some code. So this is basically where I left off the scene from the previous tutorial except that I have a different model. Also it's pretty obvious that the effect doesn't work well here and that's because I didn't need to add the output pass to the composer in that version of 3JS but now I need to since I'm using the latest version. So first I'm going to set the output color space of the renderer to sRGB more on the subject in this video. Next I'm going to import the output pass, create an instance of it and then pass it to the effect composer. One important thing to keep in mind when using this pass is that you always have to add it as the last pass to the composer. By the way if you're wondering why this is needed, well as stated in the migration guide we need to use the output pass to apply tone mapping and color space conversion. Also in the previous video I forgot to add this line to adjust the size of the composer so let's do that. And as you can see this is how the bloom should look like. Now time to transform the faces I've talked about earlier into code. So I'll start by setting the render to screen property of the bloom composer to false. This will ensure that bloom is applied but the results are not shown on the screen. Next we'll need an instance of the shader pass. So I'm going to set an instance of the shader material as the first argument to the shader pass. Next I'm going to pass in an object to its constructor and of course set the uniform variables. Base texture is set automatically by the renderer. This property contains the original textures of the bloomed objects. Bloom texture on the other hand contains the object's textures after the bloom effect is applied to them. And here we are taking the texture from the bloom composer, the render target 2 specifically as bloom is applied as the second pass. I know this may seem a bit confusing if you didn't create your own custom pass before watching this video. If this is the case then tell me in the comments section if you want a tutorial dedicated to this subject. Next we need to set the vertex and fragment shaders. The second argument of the shader pass is the texture ID. Usually you don't need this except when you pass the base texture with a key different than TD Fuse, which you are probably familiar with. So bottom line if you pass the base texture to the shader with the property name TD Fuse, you don't need to set the texture ID. If on the other hand you want to use a more expressive property name for the base texture make sure you set the exact same name as the second argument to the shader pass constructor. Now in the HTML file I'm going to create the vertex shader and make a varying variable to pass the UV to the fragment shader and in the fragment shader I'm going to have the varying variable of course as well as the base and bloom 2D samplers. This part represents the original colors of the object's texture. 
This one represents the colors of the texture generated out of the bloom effect and this tiny part is the intensity. That done, now we need to create a new effect composer, add render pass as usual and the pass that we've just created obviously and then if you remember we must add the output as the last pass. And before I forget, let's reset the size of this composer when a window resize event is triggered and of course we need to call it in the animate function. We got an error, because for some reason I need to add .js to the shader pass import path. As you can see we got the same results except that now the bloom is not applied to the scene entirely but to each of its objects individually. That being said, let's implement the selection code. So first, let's create a constant that has the number of the special layer. It could be any number except zero. Next, I'm going to create the layer and the dark material and also an object in which we are going to store the original materials of the objects so we can apply them back later on. That done, now I'm going to create the function responsible of darkening the objects. So here we have a condition to be met. The first part we need to make sure it's a mesh because it can be something else like a model's bone or an audio instance. The second part of the condition is that the object must not be a member of the bloom layer. Then if both conditions are met we are going to store the mesh's original material to the materials object with its UID property as a unique key so we can find it later to apply it back to the mesh and we'll assign the dark material to it and we are done with this function now in this function we are going to check in the materials object if a material with the current object UID exists if it does we are going to apply it to the object then delete it from the materials object That done, in the animate function I'm going to call traverse from the scene and set the non-bloomed function as an argument. This will run the function on every object in the scene and I'll do the same thing with the restore material function. By the way, the order in which I called these functions is so important, so don't forget that when you try to implement this. Now we are in the opposite case as nothing is affected by the bloom and that's because no object is member of the bloom layer. So to add an object to that layer I'm going to use the ray caster. If an object is not a member of the bloom layer, the toggle method will add it to it, and vice versa. Now let's give it a try, and there we go. Now we can tweak the effect by changing the intensity or maybe the tone mapping algorithm which is what I'm about to do. With this model I didn't need a light source but you may working with other ones. So if I try another one as you see the scene is dark and still is no matter where I click. So as I said to fix that I'll just need to add some light.
In this extra section, I'm going to use the GUI to activate the bloom on some of the model's parts instead of clicking on them. So, I'll get rid of the light and load the previous model. Next, I'm going to create a folder for the parts. Object 11 here is the name assigned to one of the sword's meshes, which I want to apply the bloom to. Get object by name here will give me access to that exact object, and toggle as I explained earlier will toggle the membership of the object to the bloom layer. The rest doesn't need any explanation at this point. Clicking on the UI is running the Raycaster code, so I'm going to get rid of it. And this is it for this video, so make sure to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.